This is The Planted Runner. I'm Coach Claire Bartholik. There's one race in long distance running that gets no respect. It's like the redheaded stepchild of endurance running. And this is coming from a redhead, of course. That race is the half marathon. Apparently not even worthy of getting its own name, the half marathon is 13.1 miles or 21 kilometers of pure endurance glory. Except without the actual glory or prestige of its big brother, the marathon. Why is that? Most of the planet couldn't get up and run a half off the couch. You don't see half marathon fun runs or color runs aimed to raise money for the junior high school band. No, that's because the half is an intimidating distance that you actually have to train for. And if you want to get really good at it, it can take every bit as much training and dedication as the marathon. I'm certainly not going to change the half marathon's lackluster reputation in one podcast, but I'd like to explore why the half marathon deserves a lot more respect and maybe, just maybe, it should be your next A goal race. And I don't mean go race a half a few weeks before your marathon during your buildup. I mean pick a great half marathon course and train to get really good at it for its own sake. Now, why would you want to do that? Let's find out. Welcome to The Planted Runner. I'm Coach Claire Bartholik, and my mission is to help you improve your running, your mindset, and your life with science-backed training and plant-based nutrition. Today, we're going to explore training for the half marathon. I'll go over why the half distance is a great goal race, how training for the half differs, and how getting good at the half can set you up to be even better at the marathon. If you're graduating from 5Ks or 10Ks, the half is the next natural step. But if you're stuck in a marathon rut, stepping back to the half marathon for a cycle might be just what you need to break through your plateau. Before we get into the details, I'd like to invite you to run with me in my beautiful hometown this fall, September 12th through 15th, 2024. I will be hosting a four day running retreat in the Blue Ridge Mountains in Asheville, North Carolina. We'll stay in luxury cabins right on the French Broad River where we can run right out the door. You'll get run coaching, strength training classes, running gait analysis, and more. And of course, it will feature amazing plant-based food and a little nightlife as well. We had so much fun last year that I cannot wait to do it again. It's perfect for adult runners of all ages, paces, and abilities, and you're bound to meet runners just like you. Spaces are very limited and it's first come first serve. So sign up today at theplantedrunner.com slash retreat. I'll be offering early bird pricing until March 15th. So be sure to take advantage of that as soon as you can. I can't wait to run with you this September. Don't forget to stay tuned all the way to the end of the episode for another mental strength minute. Fortify your mind in 60 seconds or less. So why don't more people brag about training for the half marathon? Part of the issue is that silly word half in half marathon. Its very name implies that it's something less than something else. When you tell non-runners that you're a runner, what's the first question that they ask? Most of the time it's, have you run a marathon? And then it's, have you run the Boston? They always put the the in there, right? (laughs) Nobody asks, have you run a half marathon with any kind of envy? even if they've never run a mile. The marathon gets all the glory, doesn't it? And believe me, I got sucked into this mentality as well. After I ran a half, I immediately wanted to graduate to the marathon because that's the next step. That's just what you do. It never even crossed my mind to try to get good at the half. The half deserves more recognition in its own right. Running 13.1 miles as fast as you can is still a hard and worthy goal. And the beauty of it is that once you've developed a good base of fitness, your entire life doesn't have to revolve around training as it tends to be in full marathon training. The half is almost as aerobic as the full, so lots of easy miles will definitely help your performance, but you don't need to run 20 miles every other Saturday to be well prepared for the half. Most runners can very comfortably get away with 14 to 16 miles as their longest long runs in a half buildup. If you want to, you can keep the same volume of miles as you would in full training, but you can spread it out over the week, which can help with your schedule and lifestyle as well as recovery. 
or you can choose to not run as much and honestly, you'll be fine. And in some cases, even better. You see, the thing with training for marathon after marathon is that burnout over training and plateaus will almost inevitably happen to most runners. Being a marathon becomes part of your identity. And for some runners, doing anything else just doesn't have the same pizzazz. So you keep racing the same distance over and over again, and then you wonder why you're not getting different results. Or maybe you are still getting better and the lure of the marathon PR is too seductive a siren song to resist. So you keep at it without realizing that a little spice in your race calendar might just be the key to your next breakthrough in the marathon. Now, a lot of runners that I know and coach will say that they always include a half marathon tune-up within their marathon build. That can be great at the beginning of the cycle as a fitness check to set your marathon training paces. It's also perfect about four to six weeks away from your goal marathon to see how well training has gone and to have better insight of what marathon goal paces should be. But what I'm talking about today is making the half the goal not a tune-up leading up to something else, but racing a half to get really good at a half. Training for a half doesn't have to be a whole lot different from a full, with the exception, as I mentioned, of shorter long runs, and in many cases, lower weekly volume. The paces of many of your workouts will be a touch quicker as they will be geared towards your faster half pace rather than your full. So to compensate for the higher intensity, you'll want to drop down the distance and or frequency so you can absorb the training well. So higher intensity and lower volume can mean that you have more time to be with your family, less stress about fitting everything you have to do into your life, and maybe sleeping in a little later in the morning. I'll go over more details about how to train for a half in just a bit, but compared to marathon training, you can have a little more balance with the rest of the things you do and love in life. Besides having a little more flexibility in your life, another great thing about the half is that you're not completely wrecked from the race like you are from the marathon. Sure, if you run it hard, you should be sore after a good half, but not the kind of week-long, cringing, just looking at the staircase kind of sore. You'll get all the excitement of a good race, and you get to run normally just a few days later. And because recovery is shorter for a half than a full, you can do more of them in a year if you like them while still improving. I generally don't recommend training for more than two goal marathons per year because the recovery is so long and so is the buildup. But with a half, you guessed it, you recover in half the time. Now, your buildup for your best half will vary depending on your fitness and your lifestyle, but a fit endurance runner can get ready for a half in 6 to 12 weeks instead of the 12 to 20 weeks for a full. And it's not just your recovery from the race that's shorter and easier. With a lighter training schedule than the full, you might just be giving your body and your brain the break you need to actually become a stronger, faster marathoner. It seems counterintuitive, but at some point training less, and whether that's less often, less intensely, or less distance, actually becomes beneficial to runners, especially as we get older and as we need the recovery boost. Now, I'm sure there are still some of you out there saying, yeah, yeah, that's great, but still, the half is nothing compared to the marathon. It just doesn't excite me. Well, that might be true for some people, while still others just keep going up and up and up. A marathon becomes nothing compared to a 50K, then 50 miles, then 100K, then 100 miles, and so on. So it's really all about perspective. If you're still on the fence, I encourage you to go back and think of why you started running marathons in the first place. For nearly everyone, the marathon is a challenge that takes us out of our comfort zones. It takes training and consistency and discipline, and we're rewarded with a sense of accomplishment and the freedom to eat a lot more food than our sedentary friends. But at some point, after doing marathon after marathon, are you really challenging yourself? Sure, the running and the training can still be challenging, but have you found a kind of comfort zone with the marathon distance, with being a marathon runner? If the answer might be yes, try a half marathon cycle or two. The marathon will still be there when you're ready to come back to it, and you might just be even better at it than you were before. Ready to put a 21K race on your schedule this year? 
I'll explain how to train for it right after this. Greetings from Evergreen Podcasts. We're rolling out a listener survey and we want to hear from you. The information in the survey will help us gather statistics and in turn make our shows more appealing to advertisers. I know most people don't like ads, but this is one of the only ways our shows make money and help keep their lights on. We promise it will only take a few minutes, but the impact on our podcasts will be tremendous. As a token of our appreciation, we'll randomly select one lucky participant each month to win an exclusive merchandise package from Evergreen Podcasts. Head to evergreenpodcast.com slash listener survey to help a show and possibly get some free stuff for doing so. We can't thank you enough for the support. Now back to the show. Women's Running Stories, where we explore the intersection between running and life. Because every woman who is committed to a running journey has a story to tell, and this is where you'll find those stories. I am host and producer Cherie Louise Turner. I'm a 53-year-old runner, and together with original music by musician and runner Cormac O'Regan, we bring these inspirational stories to life. Please join us to fuel your adventures. Welcome back to The Planted Runner. I'm Coach Claire Bartholik. If you decide to dedicate a training cycle to get good at the half marathon, you'll want to explore what a training block for the half looks like. Like the marathon, the half is still a highly aerobic event, so keeping the majority of your training miles in the easy zone is your best bet. Not only does this build the exact energy system that you will rely on most during the race, keeping it slow helps prevent injuries. I like to say the easy miles are the cake and the speed work is the icing. Cake is still pretty good without the icing, but it just doesn't really work the other way around. If you're just starting out, you'll want to build your weekly miles and your long run miles gradually. The best way to do that is to build for three weeks, then cut back the fourth week, then build again, repeating the third week mileage. This keeps you from adding too much too soon and allows you to absorb all that good training. For example, if your long run is five miles in week one, you can build to six week two, seven on week three, go back to five miles for week four, then go back to seven miles for week six, building for another three weeks before dropping back again. Most experienced runners will still want to build in the same pattern, but you'll be starting from a higher base, so adding two or even three miles to your long run is generally safe and recommended, since percentage-wise, it's not that big of a jump for you. If you are just looking to finish the distance for the first time, or for the first time in a long time, adding speed elements to your long run really isn't that necessary. But if you're ready to try to crack that PR, adding a few miles at race pace to the end of your long run is a great idea. For most runners, I typically add some kind of speed element to the long run every other week. For your midweek workouts, and I defined a workout as any run that's meant to be faster than easy pace, you can add a shorter interval speed session in the early part of the week and a tempo type run a couple of days later. If you're new to speed work and want to get a crash course on speed work 101, head to theplantedrunner.com slash sprint. I've got a 30 minute masterclass on everything you need for speed as part of my sprint session series. That's theplantedrunner.com slash sprint. Or you can enter to win a session for free just by writing an Apple podcast review of the show. I'll choose a new winner every month. Now, a word of caution when planning out your own speed days. Take a look at your weekly runs and be sure that only 20% of the time you're running fast. You absolutely can train for a half marathon only running three days a week, but if you do that, it's not a great idea for those to be two speed sessions and a long run. If you do that, you're limiting your ability to develop your aerobic system, which is the majority of what you need for the race. Now, I can already hear some people saying, but what about cross training? What if you run hard or long just three days a week, but you spend another two or three days on the bike or in the pool? Aren't you working your aerobic system by doing that? And the answer is yes. Yes, you are. And there are plenty of programs out there that are designed just like this. They tell you to run hard a couple times a week and then do other things to boost your aerobic system the rest of the time. That might work fine if you're training for a triathlon, 
But I'll tell you that most triathletes don't train that way either. The problem with this approach is that the thinking is backwards. The theory is that by running less, you're putting less stress on your bones and joints and you recover while swimming or biking. I agree that you can recover with cross training, but if all you do is run hard less often, you're increasing your chance of injury and slowing your body's time to adapt because every time you run, you're running hard with lots of stress on unadapted legs. When you run slow and easy more often, you're sneaking up on your fitness. Your body doesn't even realize that it's working that hard because it's not working that hard, but it still makes the little adjustments it needs to make you a more efficient runner. You're not shocking your system by banging out blistering 400 repeats once a week. When you instead run a lot of slow miles most of the time and then turn up the pace for the 400s, your body doesn't freak out and sound the alarm because it recognizes running, even faster running, as just a normal thing that it's used to. So if you can only run three days a week, make one of those days nice and slow and keep the speed work to a sprinkle. As you get closer to race day, you'll want your speed days to be more specific to the half. This means you'll want to practice race effort and pace in manageable chunks that get progressively more challenging and more achievable each week. What about fueling for the half? This is another way the half is so much more manageable than the full. Mid-race nutrition is far less critical, but you still need to have a plan. If you can run a half marathon in less than 90 minutes, you technically don't need to take in any calories during the race. That's because if you ate the night before and had a decent breakfast the morning of, your liver and your muscles will have enough glycogen on board to last you the whole time. But just because you don't have to take in fuel doesn't mean you shouldn't. Your brain will start to rein in the speed in your legs well before the tank hits zero. In fact, some studies show that performance declines when the muscles still have half their glycogen capacity stored. You can work in training on pushing the point back where you're forced to slow down, but it's a lot simpler to take in a few calories of your favorite fuel on the race course. I like to do that early on in the race at about the 30 minute mark to be sure to keep my brain happy. But if you're like most runners, the half will take longer than 90 minutes and you should plan to take fuel at least once or twice during the race. A great timing plan is every 30 minutes, but be sure to practice your plan on your long runs to be sure that it works for you because every tummy is different. The half marathon is an awesome distance that's challenging yet still allows you to have a normal life. Well, that is until you get so good at them that you decide to step it up to the full. And now it's time for the Mental Strength Minute. Fortify your mind in 60 seconds or less. Today's topic is this mile. This mile is a mantra I've used to remind myself to stay present in this mile. Long distance running is overwhelming when you think about how long you will be running, but if you can just stay focused in the mile you are running, it suddenly becomes achievable. Adapt this to your own situation, so it could be this kilometer, or this lap, or even this driveway, or this telephone pole. When you focus solely on what you need to do right in this moment, you're free from wasting worry on the rest. Thank you for listening to The Planted Runner, part of the Evergreen Podcast Network. Don't forget that you can win free access to one of my sprint session masterclasses just for writing an Apple podcast review. So be sure to write yours right after your run today. Reviews are the number one way to boost this show's reach, and it's a great way to tell me what you'd like to hear next because I read every single one. Have a great run today. There is no hood like parenthood. When you meet a fellow parent, you just kind of get each other on a whole nother level. Hi, I'm Kanika Chanda Gupta. I'm a former CNN journalist, mom of three, including twins, and host of That's Total Mom Sense, the podcast. I interview change makers on their life lessons, legacy, and superpower of intuition, aka their mom sense and dad sense. I've had some pretty amazing parents on my show. Hey, what's up? I'm Kelly Rowland. Hi, this is Chelsea Clinton. It's me, Bobby Brown. Can't wait to share my story. 
episodes release every Thursday. Subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts and on YouTube. Join my tribe at thatstotalmomsense.com and follow me on Instagram at Kanika Chadda Gupta. I'm thrilled to be on this journey with you.